Alright, hello everybody, this is Harbinger with another Redstone video for you. We'll be doing in this video, um, just in response to a lot of the questions I've been asked via YouTube and comments that I've seen on Reddit, I'm going to give you a closer look at the methods that I use to set up my logic decoders, my display drivers, and a quick look at the display for uh, the projects that I've been doing recently. Before we do get started, I want to point out that my goal in these videos is by no means to teach you how to reproduce these things block by block. I think it would be a waste of my time to be creating massive schematics that take as long to build as the circuit. It uh, is much, much more effective and good for everybody if I just show you the methods that I use, give you a good start explanation and understanding of how things work so that you can do your own experimenting and make these projects evolve on your own. Basically all the large all the large scale things that I have done have basically just been larger versions of what I'm about to show you here. So we'll go ahead and get started with a look at the display. This was just the face of the large dot matrix display that I used in my last video really simple to make. Uh, you just have a one block thick wall here, holes cut out to mount the torches in. Behind those holes you have a brick of dirt for the torch to rest on. And then to change the display, each of those torches, the block on, that they're on needs to have a line of redstone run to the back of them. You can get uh, really complicated and time-consuming figuring out how to wire all of these without shorting them out and making them come out in a nice uniform pattern. With one this large what I did was actually divide things in half. The bottom part of the display was run down to the ground and then I had a platform that I built across there that had the top half of the display run into that. Made things much easier. Then I just had the display driver that I'm going to show you. There were two levels of that, one above and one below. Uh, that just takes practice and time and trial and error and you'll get the hang of doing that. What we'll eventually end up with though is a bunch of uniform lines running into the back of the display. The way I do things with this is I put an inverter where all of those terminate since to turn the display off, each of those pixels needs to have power sent to it. We have an inverter that supplies constant power until it receives an input, and that way the input actually turns the torch on rather than turning it off. Also, by the time you run lines of redstone all the way down here from the display, you're definitely going to need to uh, have an inverter there to keep propagating the signal to the back of the display. But what we're looking at is, uh, we'll just assume that this is going into, say, a four-segment display, since that's what we have here. If we were doing, say, a seven-segment numeric display, it'd just be three more lines here. Everything else would work exactly the same. We'll just keep these input lines parallel, stretch them out as far as they go, add repeaters as necessary. And then what we have is this line of dirt going over them creates a overlapping grid. We have a line of redstone going across that top of that and that is constantly powered so that these torches we have on the side stay off. And what that allows us to do is by supplying power this here, it staples the redstone above, the torches that are on the side are able to turn on these individual segments. Now what's happening here, you can of course do whatever you want with these to get whatever combination you need. If this were a seven segment display, I'm displaying a number, and you just need to keep track of which of these lines running on the ground here corresponds to which segment up there. Whichever one segments you're going to want on, that's where you place the torches. This line right here would say be to control the number one, 
make that display on the screen. You just make sure that those torches turn on the two segments that you would need to have a one up there. There are more efficient ways to build, uh, build the display driver. I usually stick to this method because it is very intuitive. It's very easy to duplicate since it's just line over line. And most importantly, it is very scalable. This right here, of course, is only four segments. If you're doing a seven segment display, extend out a little bit farther. When I was doing that right there, which is essentially a 35 segment display, I ended up having two rows of this. There was one above and one below because I needed to have 20 segments controlled by the top, bottom half and 15 controlled by the top half. But basically was the exact same thing, just scaled up a little bit. The benefit of this too is that you can cram these right next to each other. If I put a torch here, it'll do the exact same thing with a line placed across the top there. Despite the fact that it changes the look of the redstone here, there's actually no connection between these between that torch and this line right here. So it doesn't interfere. That way if you're doing a counter from 1 to 10, you can cram all these right next to each other with only having to deal with space to go around the repeaters that might be necessary. Right, that's a quick rundown of that. You can see it's getting dark. Once it gets light again, we'll start going through what I think people have the most trouble with, and that is the decoder using the uh, variable bit input logic gates. Okay, and this seems to be the part of the project that uh, everybody's been having the most trouble with. Not going to go into great detail uh, covering the names of all the gates and explaining to you which gates are used where and how they're used and all that. What's more important is that you understand exactly how they work in, uh, in Minecraft and in these projects. Let me shut this off real quick. There we go. All right. What we're looking at here is a gate with a 2-bit input. I'm going to assume that uh, most of you are at least familiar with binary and not go into detail on that either. But basically, when we talk about <clears throat> the number of bits involved in an input or in a circuit like this, it's just how many lines of redstone are involved. This is 2-bit, so there's two different inputs, each one being its own individual bit. The way that they work is, at least in the method that I use, we have this torch right here that controls the output. In order for that torch to turn on and give us an output, conditions have to be met to disable this line of redstone that is keeping that torch off. So we have right here, and it's only 2-bit, this would uh, require a binary input of 3 to give us an output meaning that the 1's place and the 2's place would both need to be on. Shuts off both of those torches, allowing that torch to turn on and give us an output. Of course, if either of these are off, that torch is allowed to stay on, powering this line and blocking that. Basically, a gate like this is uh, just like a gate would be in real life. You need to have the proper key or sequence of inputs to be able to pass through and get an output. Now this again is uh, just a simple little simple little 2-bit one. Um, now it doesn't matter at all where this output goes. Again, it takes a binary input of 3 and 2 bits would give us a number between 0 and 3. A 0 on this gate could just as easily be a 1, 3, whatever you want it to be displayed on the screen. Doesn't matter at all. <coughs> Biggest mistake I could see people making uh, would be when we get a little bit more complicated here. This is basically exactly the same thing. We would need a input of 3 
to allow an output on this gate here. The difference being that uh, I'm gonna kill this sheep if it doesn't go away. All right, difference being here that we have four inputs instead of two. Now, all right, seriously, hold on just a second. All right, now that I've killed three sheep and a cow, get back to things here. Again, the major difference here is that we're dealing with four inputs. Now, we can't just simply do the same thing that we did over there and rely on the first two bits, which make up a three, to control the entire gate. Whenever you add extra digits, those extra digits need to be dealt with with every gate. So, what we have here is torches above another torch, just an inverter there, so that instead of this right here, where this torch will turn off when it receives an input, for this torch to be off, <clears throat> for this torch to be off, there can be no input. So, get exactly the same results when bit two and bit one, which add up to three, are on. We get an output. However, if either of the other two bits are on, turns that torch on, which interrupts the output. This is really important to remember because if you say we're counting from 0 to 15 like you'd be capable of with 4 bits, if you didn't expressly state that this gate would only be active when the first two bits were on and these two were off, what would happen is every time you found a binary number where the first two bits were on, this gate would end up being active. So if you were counting from 0, through 5, 0 to 15, this gate would end up being active if you hit 3, it would end up being active if you hit 7, and it would be active again if it hit 15. So we have to make sure that we end up expressly stating the state of it what the state of every bit needs to be. Then you just make sure to connect all of the corresponding pins. Pin 5, well, excuse me, pin 4 on all of these gates would have to be connected to each other. Same thing with 3 and 2 and 1. So that whatever you're using to input the binary numbers into the system, that one input is sent to all of the gates. So each of the gates will receive all four bits of input. Only one of the gates should activate based on those four bits of input. So hopefully this helped clarify uh, any questions that you may have had. I know I kind of glossed over a few things just to make sure that this video stayed under the 15 minutes that YouTube requires. Um, again, you can probably copy block by block everything that I did here and do some experimenting on your own and uh, figure out any other issues that you may need to resolve before you can implement this on your own. But the logic gates, in my opinion, are generally the quickest and the easiest part to, uh, part to construct in one of these circuits once you get used to, uh, once you get used to setting them up anyway. Again, what I've showed you here can be scaled up as high as you want. You can use this same method to make a 8-bit decoder. You can string things like that together to cover, you know, however many inputs you want, or however, however many characters you want to display, however many segments you need to drive. Um, again, once you once you know the basics. You just repeat the basics over and over again to make things bigger and bigger. So, again, hope that helped. Thank you for watching. I will try to keep the videos coming.